Thank you for this incredible show of enthusiasm to show aviation innovation in the making. We heard uh, somewhere that there was going to be a jetpack demonstration on Aeroshell Square. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here for that. And now for the unveiling of the jetpack. We've now got something that you can strap on, you can fly around for up to 30 minutes. Uh, we've got something now that I suppose is what we call our newborn baby. And it's very analogous to the famous Wright Brothers story. You know, that 12 seconds at, at Kitty Hawk were famous and pivotal. You know, we've done our, our Wright Brothers moment, we've done our 12 seconds proving flight, we've moved on from there. We're now flying figure eights, we're flying circuits, or, or as you call them here in America, uh, patterns and hovering, and we're, but it's still a newborn baby. And although this is our 11th prototype, next year when we come back, what you'll see will be, have, be more capable than this, and we'll build on the future, just like the EAA does. Glenn, thanks, first of all, for taking a few minutes out. How do you devote 27 years of your life to one project like this? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, there could be one or two rude answers to that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I suppose it was just that dream of the jetpack. Every time I, I suppose I lost heart and I, I wanted to stop on it, it would never get out of my head. And, uh, and I, I, you know, you get blocked by a problem and you think about it for a few weeks and then you, then you solve the problem and move on, you move on. I think many of the home builders that are here today know that, uh, you know, many of them here have worked 5, 10 or 15 years on their aircraft. Uh, so I think they can understand that, that there is, you know, a dream that, that keeps you going every day. Now, when you first saw the, did you see the Bell Rocket Belt? Was that how it got started? Sure, I saw the Bell Rocket Belt on Lost in Space, uh, and then of course I saw all the cartoons like the Jetsons and all those sorts of things, and that's really how it started. Yep. How did you get from jet or rocket engines to a two-stroke driving uh, fans? Well, in the end, I made the decision. I'm a scientist by training, and and I, I try to set up experiments where you make a decision based on science rather than faith or belief. And when it came to building the jetpack, I said, I've got to base this on logic. And when you sat down for a, y a few months and looked at the equations, it was very clear that the rocket-propelled system was, wasn't ever going to go beyond 30 seconds. And a gas turbine-based system might get you up to five or six minutes. And that's all it was ever going to do. Uh, and I had set my goal of flying for half an hour. So I had to find another solution. Um, and in the end, you know, the, the ducted fan idea came out, but even standard ducted fans weren't quite up to the task. Uh, and we had to make them a lot more efficient than a standard ducted fan and, and do a lot of tricks inside to make them straight, you know. Aero TV is brought to you by... You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. Welcome back to Oshkosh and AirVenture 2008. Paul Plack here with Harrison Martin. Harrison is the son of Glenn Martin and has been his test pilot. Harrison, I have to ask you, do you not have the coolest teenage life in the world? I think so. Um, I can't think of any cooler. Well, tell us how you first got involved in this. Did, did you share your dad's dream early on, or did you see him putting these together and catch it later? Well, I did um, you know, share his dream, um, but when I got to about 15, it was really... A, really when I could help by um, flying it. If I understand correctly, your, your biggest contribution at that point was not weighing as much as your dad, is it? <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, at one point I was a bit too light and um, we had trouble keeping it on the ground. Tell us where you go from here. What do you, are, are you going to stay involved with your dad's company? Uh, yeah, I definitely am. I want to continue testing them. Um, I do want to train up new people who buy them. I just, I just want to keep flying them. What is the training process like for an aircraft which obviously can only accommodate one person at a time? It's, it's different. Um, you basically have to make it up as you go along. We basically get it and Dad says, try this today. And if it works, we do it. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Now what we're going to do today is Harrison's going to strap in. We've got issues obviously with crowd and safety and, and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to do a straight hover and we've been given permission to do that as long as we hold him down. So we'll go do that now.
amazing. It's, it's a feeling of lightness, so you're just floating there. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Well, now, the word practical shows up in your literature. Honestly, even though you have a 30-minute duration now, how practical will this be and who will fly these? Yeah, well, practical is a term that you know, can mean one thing to one person and another thing to another person. You know, the, the first helicopters that the U.S. Army bought at the end of the Second World War you know, had a duration of 20 minutes. Uh, and, and that was used for practical purposes. The first time they used it was to rescue a downed pilot in Burma. Um, obviously, if you can fly for five hours, there is more practicality than if you can fly for 30 minutes. We all know that the Wright brothers only flew for 12 seconds, and I'm sure they got asked too, you know, of what use is flying for 12 seconds. But again, it's not so much what they did on that day, it's the point that that was the start of something that was going to grow into something. And it's the same with this technology, it's going to keep growing and growing, and we're going to end up with, you know, far greater endurance and far greater practicality as the product evolves. Do you eventually see it being a sort of all-weather vehicle or, or being available in that form? Yeah, I mean, there's no technical reason why you couldn't fly in all weather. Um, at the moment, we haven't done that. We're, we're again, I, you know, like, like any new aircraft, you want to try and fly on a nice day the first day. You don't, you don't want to go out there on a bad weather day. Uh, but as we build experience uh, with the machine, there is nothing inherently in it uh, that, that will be adversely affected by weather. All right, everybody's going to say, I want one. Give me the details. So give me the details. Sure. You can, you can order one today, just like uh, most of the other aircraft that are here. There's a deposit agreement, 10% uh, down. Uh, the full price is $100,000. Uh, the first uh, people will be receiving their jetpacks uh, pretty much at Oscos next year. Do you, are you set up to, to build in the kind of quantities? Have you done the manufacturing design research that, that goes into this? Yeah, we've done a lot of preliminary design work, but one of the problems we have is we don't know what the volume is going to be. Part of the reason of coming here to Oshkosh is to try and gauge what that volume is. You know, if we received orders for 500, we certainly couldn't you know, cope with that at the moment. Uh, but we've got to you know, come here, find out how many we're going to sell, what the interest truly is, uh, and then we'll size the production line based on that. Um, so we have a range of people getting in the aircraft, let's say from, from Harrier pilots, helicopter pilots, uh, to 15, 16 year old boys. We had a grandmother uh, in Wisconsin here have a go recently. Um, so we're trying to put a range of people in it to get feedback on, on what we need to do for them. Well, we hope you're able to work out something before the end of the week where we can see you in a venue where more people can watch. That was a little tight this morning. Maybe we can get you out on the runway. Yeah, I mean, that was bizarre. Uh, I don't think anybody predicted that. The EAA certainly didn't. Uh, we certainly didn't. We, we expected a couple hundred people uh, and that they would all get a very good view. Uh, in the end, Erichel Square was packed and, and the people at the back literally couldn't see anything. So uh, we're going to try and arrange to see if we can do another demonstration for them later in the week. Well, they'll be able to see it on Aero TV. Glenn, thank you very much for talking with us and good luck with the product. Okay, thank you very much.